Okay, Phil Lee returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. It's now Tuesday, the 22nd of uh, December, 2020. And uh, before I can forget, uh, click on the notification bell in the upper right, way up there in the upper right. Uh, on, and uh, that way you'll learn when I uh, come back on uh, YouTube for another episode. Today's topic is why Georgians should vote for uh, the Democrat candidates in uh, next month's uh, runoff election for the senators from Georgia. Both senators in Georgia were Republican. Both of them are in runoffs. And both of them, uh, we, uh, those of us that care about Confederate heritage should vote against them if we live in Georgia. And here's the reason. They've taken us for granted. Uh, the military spending bill that re recently got through Congress uh, is um, has an amendment that would require all of the uh, military bases that are, that are connected with a Confederate uh, name uh, drop those names within three years. And only five Republican senators voted against it. Only five. So it's time to just let them know. Um, both of the Democrat senators vote in Georgia, uh, both of the Republican senators in Georgia uh, uh, voted in favor of that bill, excuse me, in favor of that bill. And only uh, five Republican senators voted against it. So with the Democrat or with the Republican senators in Georgia voting in favor of it, they're basically they're basically showing us that they don't care about us. Those of us that have an interest in Confederate heritage and specifically Confederate monuments, Confederate memorials, and the name on the military bases, they don't care about us. So they've thrown us under the bus. It's time to just let them know they can't take us for granted anymore. We're we're, we're going to go with a, a Democrat uh, government. Uh, rather than j just be ignored and uh, thrown under the bus like they've done. Now, if, if the Democrats do win that runoff election, if they get both of those seats, then what will happen is the Democrats will have control of the House of Representatives, they'll have control of the Senate, and of course, they'll have control of the White House. So then that means they can do just pretty much whatever they want to do that requires a majority vote. And uh, so I, here are three things they could do. I can't say they will do them, but here are three things they could do. One is they could admit uh, Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico as states. And if they come in as states, then that means the Democrats will get four more uh, Democrat senators. Uh, secondly, they could stack the Supreme Court because uh, they don't like the uh, appointees that, uh, that uh, Trump made. They can uh, essentially offset them by stacking the Supreme Court with three or more, or I guess maybe four or more uh, Democrat appointments and just, you know, Get them through uh, through the uh, with a majority vote in the Senate to get them approved and get them in. Uh, we know that uh, that Harris and, and Biden refused to answer the question during the campaign as to whether or not they would do that. So I think that's the same thing as saying that they probably would do it if they uh, if they felt that uh, it would uh, help accomplish their objectives. The third thing they could do is they could eliminate the debate or closure uh, vote in the Senate, which means that basically. By tradition, uh, the Senate would not approve a new bill unless they could get at least 60 votes, 60 percent. But Obama changed that uh, when he wanted to get some of his judge uh, appointments through to just a simple majority vote. Now, he did not apply it to the Supreme Court and neither did uh, Trump, but Trump did follow him on the lower on the lower courts. When uh, Trump tried to get uh, lower court Republican appointees through, he did. He followed uh, Obama's lead there, said, we're just going to do this by majority vote uh, because you set the president, Democrats. So the other thing, the other, the main, I think the key, a key reason we want to, I want to see the Democrats win in, uh, in, in this Georgia runoff is because the Republicans also need to get the message that they are, uh, <laughs> they're 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 contributing significantly to a reckless fiscal policy for this government, completely reckless. Now, this new COVID rescue bill that went through uh, Congress with over fifty five hundred pages, only six only six Republicans voted against it. Only six. The rest of it is it is it is so full of uh, crap. A uh, hundred billion dollars is set aside for uh, higher education, which means that you can expect more money for academic historians to demean, disparage, 
and demonize the South. Uh, you, you can expect that from uh, books on the Civil War and Reconstruction. It also has uh, lots of money in there for the uh, uh, Institute of Humanities. I can't remember the exact name, but it is one of the, organ the federal government sponsored organizations that gives money, gives money to academic uh, historians to write their uh, to get grants to, to write their books. And it's not unusual for the grant to total $10,000 or more. And you, you know, what comes out of that is uh, the student comes out with more books that demonize uh, Southerners uh, during the Reconstruction and uh, uh, Civil War eras. Now, what I wanna do, I'll take a note just a second here to point out, this is, I want you to consider instead buying this book U.S. Grant's failed presidency. A lot of this, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, crony capitalism uh, came of age during his presidency. This crony capitalism that uh, has led us to have this ir irresponsible fiscal policy in the government uh, came of age uh, during uh, Grant's presidency. But because the academic presses won't write about it and, and the popular presses won't write about anything that's negative about Grant. Uh, what you have is for the last 30 years, nothing about Grant except, hey, geographies. So if you want to learn about this, then uh, you, you got to buy the book. But the book, books like this will not be published unless they sell. And, uh, you know, I can't get a grant from the uh, uh, Endowment for the Humanities. This is not going to give me a grant. Uh, they're going to give it to some academic guy working on a PhD. Okay. And um, so if you want to see books like this, you, you've, you've got to buy them. Now, don't buy them unless you're interested in learning the truth. And if you are, if you want this book, I will sell it to you for $25 with my autograph. And I will pay the postage. If you buy it, if, if it's shipped here in the United States, just uh, email me, Phil, P-H-I-L underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me.com. You can buy it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble without my signature for $20. So let me get back to my point. Let me raise, um, I want to share something on my screen here with you um, that gets to the point about the Ponzi scheme. I was I was born after World War II, but I can remember my parents talking about it. And all during the period after World War II, for the 30 or 40 years, I can remember educators would constantly say, well, you know, the government really went into debt during World War II and we'll never, ever again have our debt uh, approximate what we had in World War II as a proportion of GNPs. As you can see over here on the left of this graph, uh, national debt was a more than 100% of the uh, America's gross national product at the end of World War II. Well, look over here on the right. With this COVID, uh, these COVID rescue packages, we've, we've done it. We beat the World War II record. And I, like I say, I can remember my professors and my, my parents and my professors in college and in graduate school. Oh, we'll never, never see anything like that. Never. Well, we do right here. And it is a Ponzi scheme, what the government is doing. And the, with the uh, uh, help of the uh, uh, Republican senators and congressmen is they are pumping make-believe money into our economy and creating uh, a, a, a false prosperity. The stock market keeps going higher. And as long as the stock market keeps going higher, this is one of the key points. As long as the stock market keeps going higher, a lot of people are, well, it's all what about Confederate, Confederate heritage? Everything, everything's okay in my bank account. What do I really care about Confederate heritage? Well, let the Democrats get control. Let this, uh, let this uh, irresponsible fiscal policy continue. Uh, I don't know how long, uh, you know, for an indefinite period of time. And we will see a collapse. One thing we do know, we, we certainly do know with 100% certainty is that Ponzi schemes eventually collapse. We don't know when they will collapse, but we do know they do collapse. And unfortunately, the people that get hurt most when they collapse are the people that come in late. And uh, the people that make the laws, as you might guess, they don't come in late. Nah, nah. They know it's gonna happen before it happens. So they come in before, you know, they, they get in when the, when the opportunity is good and they get out when the opportunity is not looking so good.
We don't know. We don't have that. What we have in this country right now is not just a uh, hypocrisy from our politicians. We have a hierarchy. People in the government are taking care of themselves. And it's, 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 it's almost like George Orwell's animal farm. All pigs are equal, except that some pigs are more equal than others. And that is the end of the book. When that, when that uh, uh, slogan was promoted by those, that, the pigs in control of the farm, that was the end of the book. It seems to me we're hearing that right now. I mean, what's the evidence? Nancy Pelosi doesn't pay any attention to a mask when she's supposed to. Uh, neither does uh, Dr. Fauci. Neither does the what the Dr. Fauci's uh, number two lady who got caught in Delaware doing the same thing. Uh, Obama doesn't believe. If Obama really believed in uh, uh, climate change, would he buy? a multi-million dollar property on Martha's Vineyard, where if the sea level were to rise a few feet, it would be underwater. He didn't believe that, but do as they say, not as they do. Okay. So for Philip Lee and Civil War Chat, uh, I thank you for your interest and thank you for uh, watching and uh, welcome to see you come back again.